really like a good veggie burger, don't you? It's kind of hard to find a good pre-made one, though. So we've created a really delicious one. It's part of a fantastic burger story in our June issue, which I think you should really check out. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek and give you the recipe for the pinto bean burgers right now. The first thing you need to do is drain two cans of pinto beans. Of course, you can cook the beans yourself, but that'll add like three hours to the cooking time. I like to drain them and rinse them. And you'll notice sometimes that in the bottom of the can, some of them get stuck. So I just swirl it around and then dump it out. And then into a bowl. It just helps. Take your beans and mash them up. I'm using a potato masher. You could do this in a food processor, but why bother? Then you have to wash it, right? This is harder work than it looks. It's not really that hard. I'm just kidding. I have a bunch of scallions that's going to go in here. They just get thinly sliced. The good thing about scallions is that you don't have to pre-cook them when you put them into mixtures because they're so tender already. And then a quarter of a cup of chopped cilantro. I know, I know, cilantro. Use parsley or leave it out altogether if you don't want it. And then two eggs. You want to beat them first just so that they incorporate really nicely into the mixture. And then that can go in. And then as a binder, one and three quarters cups of cooked and cooled white rice. Don't forget, one third of a cup of dry bread crumbs. You can make your own, dry some bread out, and then grind it up in a food processor. Voila, dry bread crumbs. Quarter teaspoon of salt. That's a quarter teaspoon. And then mix it together. That's it, that's all there is to it. Now it's time to form them. This is enough to make eight burgers. Maybe what I'm gonna do is divide it into eight first, and then form it into pies. That way I'll know they'll all be even. How does that sound? I'm gonna just bring a little bit of water over there with me because I think I need to moisten my hands while I shape these so they don't get too sticky. This may look gross, but moistened hands will really help so that these will not stick to your hands while you're forming them, which is key because it can be kind of messy. Meatball rules apply here too. You could make these vegan by leaving out the egg if you wanted to. Now they're ready to cook, that's it. These are not the kind of things that you're gonna throw on the grill. You have to cook them in a, co in a pan with some oil. They're, a little, they're just a little delicate for the grill. One more time to wash these hands. The never ending hand washing. And then we can go to the stove. You can come with me. So since this pan is not big enough to cook all eight at once, I'm gonna cook them in batches. The total amount of oil for both is about a third of a cup. Heat your pan and then they go in. Obviously you can cook as many as you can fit into your pan. Put them in a single layer in your pan and then let them cook until they're crisp and brown on the first side. Dirty hands again. Hmm, what am I gonna do? Take my salad out of my sink and then wash my hands again. I have some lettuce. Any old lettuce will do. I'm gonna serve these with some garnishes or accoutrement, if you will. A tomato, cucumber, some avocado, but it's totally up to you. Whatever you want on your burger, that's what you should have usual hamburger toppings, but for a veggie burger. I think it's time to check the burgers now. Just want them nice and golden brown. Yeah. Cook the second side until it's golden brown, just like this. You can put a little bit of cheese on and melt it on top right before they're done. But while I'm waiting, I'll get my avocado ready. You really only probably need a half. Slice it right in its skin and then scoop it out. I'm using a spatula, but you can use anything, anything big. And I'm just gonna leave it sitting right in its skin and put it down with the rest of the stuff. Now it's time for the cheese. This is cheddar, you could use American, you could use blue cheese, you could use Swiss, I don't know. I'm using cheddar. And then just cover it to let the cheese melt. All there's left to do is wait. All right, we're almost ready, so I'm gonna bring this stuff up to get ready to plate it. I think they're ready. <gasps> Look at that. Cheese is melted beautifully. That's why you put the top on there. It makes it so much more even. And then you can put them directly onto the buns. And obviously, if you were cooking all of them, you would just do another batch. You could keep these warm, tented with foil. All that's left is the fun part, the garnishing. This is where your creativity can blossom. Now for the fun part. What do you want on your burger? Hmm. I want mayonnaise, but I think I'll have mustard. I'm trying to be a little healthier. I don't know. Little slice of tomato, maybe. Some cukes. A little bit of avocado. That'll make up for the no mayonnaise. What do you think? Lettuce, no lettuce. Sure, lettuce, a little bit. After all your desired toppings are on, top it off with your bun. That's pretty. Looks like it's gonna be really hard to eat. And then, well, I wouldn't bite into this on camera because I know that my mouth is not gonna get around it, but enjoy.